Hey guys, welcome back. So today I want to talk about pocket mouse guns. As you probably know, if you follow the channel, I typically carry a service-sized 9mm pistol, meaning it's roughly the size of a Glock 19, maybe a little bit bigger. Today I have a Walther PPQ on. But I generally carry a single-action, double-action CZ P01. Uh, you'll see me carrying the Walther PPQ around the shop and openly in a holster on, you know, outside the waistband. But typically I, I, I use 9mm. But that doesn't mean that I don't carry other guns. In a previous video, I showed you a Smith & Wesson revolver I like to carry. That's a 357 Magnum. It's a 340 PD. And we talked about some of the ballistics of the 357 Magnum and compared them to the 9mm. And that was actually quite a fun video. If you didn't check it out already, please do. But anyway, there are other pocket guns that I will carry to complement my primary sidearm. And these guns are... Well, the community just calls them mouse guns. And it's kind of funny because it implies that the guns aren't lethal because of their caliber. And typically, a mouse gun will fall in the range between 22 long rifle and chambering to 380 ACP. Now, some might argue 380 ACP doesn't fit the, the criteria, but there really is no you know, organization out there saying, this is what defines a mouse gun. But if you have a 32 ACP, a 25 ACP, or a 22, you're definitely carrying a mouse gun. In my pocket, I have one of my favorite little mouse guns. This is a Beretta Tomcat 3022. I'm sorry, 3032. And it is a 32 ACP. Now, this little gun's been around for a long time. It's typically found in either 22 or even 25 ACP. The 32s can be hard to find at times. There's even one very rare one that's made out of titanium. Uh, those are extremely hard to find, but they're really cool little pocket guns. And today I want to talk about my little Beretta Tomcat and talk about the 32 ACP in general. All right, so we're going to start off by firing this little gun, which is a very interesting design. Uh, it has a magazine that holds seven rounds of 32 ACP, which goes into the pistol grip, this is your magazine release right here. Manual safety, it's currently on fire. Then this lever, which looks like a safety, when pushed forward, pops your barrel up and threw my live round out. <laughs> it doesn't always do that. But um, here's a 32 ACP cartridge. So what you can do, it's a very safe gun. Put a loaded magazine into the gun, you don't have one in the chamber. You take your 32 ACP around, put it into the chamber, close the barrel, and now the gun is ready to fire. Of course, it's a double action first shot, and then single action for subsequent shots, and you have that manual safety. So this little handgun is something that I would carry, and I do carry, in a pocket by itself, no keys or anything else like that in there, without a holster, because this gun is very difficult to fire in a pocket accidentally. It's not like a striker fired um, Glock 42 or Glock 43. All right, so we'll talk more about the features of the gun here in a minute. But I'm going to start off by shooting the little guy at a steel target we have downrange at about 10, well, it's more like 15 yards. All right, as you can tell, the gun does not lock open. When I take my finger off the trigger, it sticks out past the barrel when I, I do a, you know, hold it safely. But the gun is empty does not lock open on the last shot fired. And now I can put the hammer down gently. I can even pop the barrel open to show safe and the gun's ready to be reloaded. One of the downsides to buying a Tomcat 3032 is that you will not get a spare magazine. If you go to the Beretta website, you can order them for right around 25 bucks. So yeah, it sucks. I only have one mag for the gun. I've never gotten around to ordering more mags because I don't generally carry spare magazines. The 32 ACP has been around for a long, long time. It came around right, right around the turn of the century. So it's been a popular pocket auto caliber. And this little Beretta, some would consider to be kind of on the large size for such a mouse gun cartridge or a pipsqueak cartridge, which I don't consider it to be. Uh, it, I mean, it is very, uh, it's underpowered by nine millimeter standards, but it's still some of the, one of the more powerful mouse gun cartridges. And we'll talk about that here a bit as well. But this little gun 
looks very much like a Model 92, so it has a traditional Beretta styling to it. You can see the Beretta logo here in the, the plastic grip. You have the open top slide serrations back here. We have the sights that are very similar to a Model 92. The rear is a metal dovetailed sight. The front is a front, the front side is machined into the barrel itself. We don't have a strap that goes over the slide like on the 92 where the front sight would normally be. It's actually machined into the barrel itself. Now, as I mentioned, the gun is a double action, single action pistol. And to make it safe, I'm gonna go ahead and drop the magazine out. The magazine releases right here. It's actually quite natural. You'll notice my fingers don't reach around to actually accidentally hit it. I've never had this button get pushed accidentally in a pocket, but to release it, you just push this with your thumb and it will put the magazine right into your hand. It's a very intuitive way to release the magazine. This little lever up here that looks like a safety isn't. If you push forward with your, your firing thumb, that releases the barrel. So this is useful for two purposes. First of all, you can very easily make sure that the weapon's clear and safe and unable to fire by simply popping your barrel up. Also, it makes it safe to load. Say you have um, somebody that has limited mobility or dexterity in their hands and they have a hard time drawing a slide to the rear. Well, this gun, you can put a loaded magazine into it. You don't have to run the slide because all you have to do is hit this lever, which takes very little force, pops the barrel up, put the round in, close the barrel back down, and now the gun is ready to fire. You never had to pull the slide to the rear. So for some folks, that would be a very handy feature. I like it, and I tend to sit around and play with the, the barrel release because it's just fun watching a little barrel pop up. All right, so it is a double action, single action pistol that has a manual safety as well. Now I could do without this, but it's there. It's also a slide lock safety, so when, it, when it's engaged, the slide can't move. When it's engaged, the trigger cannot be pulled fully. I'm pulling the trigger as hard as I can. The, tur the hammer will only go to half cock. If you have the gun cocked and locked, which I would recommend not carrying the gun like this, it kind of defeats its safety of having a double action trigger pull. Uh, you, again, the trigger can't be pulled when the safety isn't engaged. We disengage the safety and then the gun can be fired. So, it's a very, very interesting little guy. A lot of fun to shoot. It's actually very comfortable. Again, it looks like it's a big gun, but it's really not, and it fits nicely in a pocket, and it carries nicely in a pocket, even without a holster. Now, I know some of you guys are gonna say, oh, don't do that. There's absolutely no way you're gonna pull this double action trigger. Now, I, wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't carry it cocked and locked, but with the double action trigger and the safety engaged, the gun is perfectly safe, in my opinion, as long as it's in a pocket by itself. The pocket becomes the holster. Um, and I wouldn't recommend carrying striker-fired guns like that. You know, Glock 42s, 43s, good grief. Don't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and load the little guy up. Hold seven rounds in this magazine. You have windows. And when I get that seventh round in there, you can see the windows are full. Here's the cut for the mag catch. All right, I'm going to go ahead, pick the gun up. Put the magazine in, push it in until it clicks. Now the gun does not have a magazine safety. So if I drop this magazine out, take the safety off, you'll notice the gun will fire. Okay, so there is no magazine safety, which I like. Push the magazine in, reach forward with your thumb, pop the barrel up, grab another cartridge, place it into the chamber, close it, take the safety off, and the gun is now ready to fire. Neat little pistol, I love it. As I had mentioned previously in the video, the 32 ACP has been a popular pocket carry auto caliber for you know decades. So right around the turn of the century, you might see folks carrying a pocket handgun like this Sauer & Son, which is a model 1913. So that's a very neat little, cal or little pistol. It's also chambered in the 7.65 Browning, which is the European equivalent of the 32 ACP. They just call it the 7.65. And this was manufactured by Sauer and & Sons. And again, this is a very cool old piece of history. It is a uh, interesting gun. It, has a, well, it deserves its own video. We're not gonna go into the details, but um, it, it's all steel. It's rather heavy, has sparse sights. Uh, this big knurled knob in the rear is actually how you charge it. That's how you move the slide 
forward and back. It's kind of interesting if you look up inside the trigger guard here, if you put your finger in the trigger guard, which you know violates modern safety protocol, but you push up with your finger like that, it will actually lock the slide to the rear. To release it, you would grab the little knurled knob on the end of the slide and pull it and let it go home. So uh, it's a very, very interesting gun. It has a manual safety here. That's fire. This is safe. So up would be fire. I'm going to go ahead and put it on safe. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and lock the bolt or slide, I guess, to the rear. And it has a seven shot magazine. The only difference now is that the Beretta Tomcat which is of comparable size, holds seven in the magazine, but has the ability to load one into the barrel by tilting it up. With the Sauer and Son, you would have to manually load one into the chamber. So let's go ahead and shoot this little guy. It's a cool piece of history. Lock the magazine in and go ahead and release the slide, put the gun on fire and shoot. All right, so even with this little gun, my finger gets pretty close to the end of the muzzle when I take my finger off the trigger and extend it along the side of the gun. But a very cool, I'm gonna lock it open. Does not lock open on the last shot fired, but you can manually lock it open. Heel release, push forward on it, and pull the magazine out. Unlike the Beretta, which just drops out, you have to pull this one out. But that's a pretty interesting piece of civilian pocket carry. But the military also used, or militaries around the world also used the 32 ACP even the United States. Let's check out some of those guns. Our gauntlet test has become kind of popular on the interwebs and other people are starting to copy it and use it as a standard for testing, which we encourage. We think that's pretty cool. So we're starting a new testing protocol. It's called the CPT test. And that's how we're going to test the ballistics of the 32 ACP. Well, what is the CPT test? It's the Coors penetration test. We have Coors beer cans that are full lined up here. And we're going to see how many cans the ball round can actually penetrate. Now, a lot of folks will be inclined to pick up something like this Hornady load for the 32 ACP, which is a hollow point. This will underpenetrate. We'll show that in ballistics gel perhaps in a future video. I do not recommend using hollow points with mouse gun calibers. 380, 32, don't use hollow points. Use ball rounds because this will grossly underpenetrate and this will just give you enough penetration to make sure that the cartridge is lethal. People die from having holes po poked in things that they need to live. This won't penetrate deep enough possibly to do that. Use a ball round. And there's a lot of people out there that echo that sentiment when carrying little tiny pistols like this Beretta. So let's go ahead and load it up. We have a Fiocchi ball round here. Uh, this ammunition comes to us from our friends over at LEX Ammunition. I wanna thank them for sending the ammunition. We do have a discount code down below if you'd like to use it. It's good store wide. And uh, yeah, they sell Fiocchi and other brands. So let's go ahead and step back. Eh, we're making this up as we go along. About three yards. Hopefully I won't get covered in beer. I'm going to have to take a knee, and as I look down the beer cans, it looks like they're fairly straight. I'm going to go ahead and use the tilt-up feature of my Beretta. Insert one cartridge. Make sure the safety's off. And take careful aim. <laughs> wow! That was pretty cool! <laughs> All right, so I had an entire 12 pack up there. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the, the little gun's safe. I'm gonna put it on safe. We can see it's empty, has no magazine in it. I'm go ahead and stick it in my pocket. And um, yeah, wow. <laughs> we have one, two, three, four, five, Six, <laughs> seven, and this would be the last round, eighth, eighth beer can, and you can see the bullet changed course and kind of nicked this can and went off to the side. So, 
Out of a full 12 pack, it penetrated eight cans. There's four cans here that were not penetrated. So I would say that that 32 ACP round is lethal based upon our CPT testing. If it can make it through eight beer cans, it's probably gonna make it through a threat. Not scientific, but cool and fun. <laughs> A lot of people are surprised when I tell them that the 32 ACP was actually a very popular military caliber and police caliber. So the cartridge started, you know, came about right around the turn of the century and very quickly it started winding up in pocket autos and handguns and by World War II, a lot of the belligerent nations were issuing 32 ACP pistols from Nazi Germany to even the United States. Here I have a couple examples of some of my historic pistols. Uh, one of them is a reproduction but this is a Walther PP. You've seen it here on the channel before. It's probably one of my favorite World War II pistols, and it's an all-steel double-action, single-action handgun. This handgun is uh, also known as, as James Bond's gun of choice, but this one is in 32 ACP. It's a rather large steel gun. It bears the marks of Nazi Germany, but it holds eight rounds in a single-stack magazine. Let's go ahead and shoot this little guy. It's a very pleasant gun to shoot. Insert the magazine. Go ahead and chamber that first round. I can fire it double action if I want to. It has a hammer drop safety. And let's go ahead and fire off the eight rounds out of this guy. Now it has really nice sights and it's a nice big comfortable handgun to shoot. All right, and that one locked open. All right, beautiful piece of history very reliable and still a very popular pistol to this day, but it's also offered in other calibers like 380. This is another Nazi Germany pistol. This one is the Browning model of 1922. This handgun is a variation of the model of 1910, which if you know your history, was used to assassinate the Archduke Ferdinand, which kicked off World War I. Now this gun also bears the marks of Nazi Germany, has Waffenamps on it. It's a nine shot, has a very large grip on it. You'll notice it has very thick wood grips. So this is definitely not a pocket pistol. Your magazine release is kind of interesting. You can see how it pulls away from the grip of the pistol. And it also has a grip safety, which is a browning feature that is echoed in a number of his designs. Let's go ahead and shoot this 1922. I'm gonna grab its nine round magazine. Go ahead and load her up. And you'll notice it's a striker fired pistol. All right, some of these old guns have uh, old springs and they're weak in them. It does have a manual safety, which is off. And it's a very big, pleasant gun to shoot. All right, it's empty. Does not lock open like the Walther PP. And last not but not least, another example of a popular handgun around the turn of the century is this 1903 pocket model that uh, was designed by John Browning but was manu manufactured by Colt. Now this is a replica and this one has a parkerized finish, has its wood grips, the, the Colt gold medallion, and it's a replica of the 1903 pistol that would have been issued to U.S. officers. So this is a 32 ACP handgun that was even used by the United States military. All right, so this gun was popular in the civilian market as the model of 1903 and also as the model of 1908, which was a 380 caliber pistol, which is another old historic caliber. And we're gonna go ahead and shoot this gun. It has the browning grip safety and nice thick wood walnut grips, but you know, they call it a pocket pistol. It's a little bit bigger than the, the Beretta. All right, I'm gonna take the magazine, load it in, pull it to the rear, and go ahead and fire the pistol. Striker fired pistol with a manual safety, and it's kind of typical of a browning design. does not lock open. And again, a very interesting historic pistol, although this one is a replica. Colt made these for a short time. They offered them in the uh, parkerized finish that you see here with the US property marks. They also offered a high polished blue version, which would be a replica of a turn of the century pocket auto. So that gives you guys an idea 
of the history of the 32 ACP and its use by militaries and police forces around the world, and you might even still find it in use in some countries as a police caliber. Breaking the little Tomcat down for field stripping and maintenance is extremely easy. First, I'll make the weapon safe by popping the magazine out. I'm going to open the barrel by pressing the lever forward and check to make sure that the weapon's clear. Now to disassemble it, you're going to want to make sure that the safety is off, the hammer is cocked, and now you rotate your barrel all the way forward until it stops. Now it's kind of sort of like the Walther PP or uh, Makarov, but if you pull the slide to the rear and pull the front up, uh, can be a little tight. Pull it slightly to the rear, pull the front of the slide up, and it's a very tight fit, but then you can pull it off. <laughs> so there you go. Now putting it back together can be just as difficult because the fit between the slide rails and the frame is extremely tight. You can see back here, your slide rails in the rear are very minimal. It's also interesting to note that if you look at the face of the bolt and you look externally and look at the face, it's missing something that most other guns have. That's an extractor. This design does not require an extractor to function. Just the cartridge blowing back against the breech face will pull itself out of the chamber and then it hits the ejector and it typically goes right over your head. Sometimes it even hits you in the face. But yeah, that's one of the really, really weird and cool aspects of the gun is the fact that it's extractorless. So if you have a round that gets stuck in the chamber, you can pop the barrel open and use a flathead from the feed ramp to pry this, the case out of the chamber. Very, very interesting and awkward little design, but that's as far as you need to take the gun down to field strip it. While we were out filming today, we always post on Instagram, and we posted something on Instagram, and one of the guys said, do you have the infamous slide cracking issue? And I should point out, because I failed to do so, that my Tomcat does not have any cracked slides. You'll see where the barrel is peening on the lower receiver, but if it's gonna have a crack, that crack is typically going to appear right here or on the other side. And you can see that mine doesn't have any types of cracks in it. That's not to say it won't crack, but I also know people that have posted online that have had those cracks, continue to shoot their guns and they work fine anyway. But yeah, mine doesn't, so I thought I'd point that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video about my Beretta Tomcat and 32 ACP and talking a little bit about the history of the 32 ACP as a military and police cartridge dating back to the turn of the century. This little Beretta is a cool gun. I think Beretta is currently making them uh, in 32 ACP. You will find them in other calibers, 22 and 25 ACP, I believe. And it's a neat little pocket gun. Yes, it's a little bit big. They come to market right around 400 bucks if you do some haggling with your local dealer. That's about what I paid for this one, I believe. And they make a good gun. Matter of fact, what was kind of funny, we had a little bit of a challenge off camera. We were screwing around and there's a man-sized target at 100 yards. I hit them three times out of eight shots fired with this little Tomcat. So, I mean, they're really neat little guns, accurate and reliable with the right ammunition. One thing that we learned out here this afternoon is that this gun and Jason just simply don't get along. He has problems with this gun cycling. It'll come back, eject the spent case, but won't go all the way home and pick up a next round, uh, pretty much with any ammunition he puts in it. I had one such fa failure with some PPU with the Fiocchi. I've shot two or three hundred rounds this afternoon and, and outside of that one mishap I haven't had any problems with the little gun. So they can be ammo specific and you also want to make sure that you can shoot it if you're going to carry it. If this gun doesn't work for you, get rid of it and get something else. And when I say this gun, I'm talking about whatever handgun you may choose for personal defense. All right guys, we're going to go ahead and load the little Tomcat up for one last 4A here. I'm going to load my magazine. Got seven rounds there, pop up my barrel, and this is the Fiocchi ammunition once again. Load it up, take the safety off, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Oh, yeah, and if you'd like to support us, swing by and check us out at Patreon. There's a link down below. We're 100% viewer supported. We're not paid by companies like Beretta. 
We do everything on our own so we can be 100% honest in everything that we say, and that's because of good people like you supporting us over at Patreon. Also, if you'd like to pick up a t-shirt from ForgeForFreedom.com, that's another great way to support us here at the channel. There is a link down below for that, and don't forget to swing by and check us out at Copper Custom. All right, guys, thank you for 10 years of support, and here we go with the last magazine out of the little Tomcat. Yep, I love this little gun, believe it or not. It's a great little pocket pistol. We'll see you guys later.